in this video, uh, we're going to talk about what lazy loading is in Ionic. Now, even if you aren't familiar with lazy loading in Ionic, you may have heard the term before. Uh, generally, it refers to loading something as you need it. So it's commonly used with uh, images. If you were to lazy load an image in uh, just a normal web page, rather than loading all of the images on the page at once, you only load them as the user needs them. So you could have, say, 100 images in the, on a really long web page, and if you never scroll to the bottom of that page, there's no need to load those images in. So lazy loading is a way to uh, cut down on HTTP requests and loading in images where they're not required. But the concept is not specific to images. Uh, and in fact, in Ionic, uh, lazy loading is used to load uh, pages or modules as they're needed rather than images. And just as an aside, there is actually lazy loading for images built into Ionic as well with uh, Ion image and the virtual scroll component. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on lazy loading pages and components. So I've already already have some content around how to lazy load and it, it's documented in the Ionic documentation as well. Basically, it's just a matter of adding uh, an Ionic page decorator to your component and setting up a, a module for that component rather than just having uh, a single app.module.ts file. So what I want to do in this video is show you the actual effect of lazy loading. Uh, so it's easy enough to do it, but you might wonder why or why are we doing it and what is that uh, achieving for us? So I have two applications up here. Uh, this is the application that I'm using for my Elite Ionic course. And so the normal version uh, with lazy loading uh, is called Hangs. And then I created uh, an alternate uh, version without lazy loading, uh, which I have installed here as well, and that's called Hangs No Lazy. So we're going to take a look at both of these and we'll bring up the um, debugger, the, the Safari inspector, and see what's actually happening as the application loads. So let's first take a look at the version without lazy loading. So I'm going to open up that now. And in order to see what's going on, we're going to bring up the Safari browser here, go into the develop menu, go to my iPhone and uh, choose this file here. Okay, so we're going to go into the timelines, uh, the timelines tab here, and this is going to allow us to see how the application is loading. Uh, we're going to see network requests and any JavaScript events, uh, layout and rendering things that are happening. Uh, what we're most interested in is the, the network requests, because that's actually going to show us what's loading into the application. So, so that we get that from the beginning, we're going to hit this refresh button here, and that's going to reload the application. And you can see what happened as the application loaded. We had our initial net, uh, network request that loaded the, the content for the application. And then all the rest of this is just that uh, little SVG animation that was playing over the first couple seconds. Uh, but what we're mostly interested in are these initial network requests just here. So you can see there's a few different uh, files that are being loaded in, but the main one we are concerned with is main.js. And so this is the bundled uh, application code for Ionic. Uh, it's everything that, we, uh, that we've built uh, in Ionic, uh, all bundled into this one file. Uh, so you can see that file is about 806 kilobytes. So if I click on, we'll just get these, uh, 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 the timeline recording again. So I'll just hit this record button here. Uh, if I click on, say, create account now, I'll do that on my phone. Uh, we can see some layout and rendering uh, happen. We've got some JavaScript events happening, but there was no additional network uh, network request there. Uh, so if I go back and actually log into the application, you can see now that we have a network uh, request firing off, and that's uh, checking against uh, the server as it's authenticating. Okay, so everything is finished loading in now. We actually have, um, uh, if you see here, there's still one network request still, which is continuing to go. Uh, that's because I'm using PouchDB and it's got this continuous uh, live replication happening with the database. Uh, but if we just sort of take a chunk of this to see what sort of network requests are happening, uh, you can see this is mostly to the server I have set up. Uh, we've got some stuff with PouchDB going with the changes. Uh, it's watching for changes on the database. Uh, but there's no additional files being loaded in here. There's no uh, additional images or, or uh, JavaScript files being loaded in for the application. And I did lie, actually. There is one image being loaded in here, which is that a uh, little purple uh, adorable avatar. So basically the point is here that once uh, the application is uh, loaded, uh, initially everything is loaded. We're not loading any additional files as we go. 
Uh, when we look at the lazy loading example, you'll see that's not the case. Uh, so let's take a look at that one now. Okay, so I've closed down the application that was not using lazy loading, and now we're going to look at the version that is using lazy loading. Now, apart from the fact that one is using lazy loading and one isn't, they are both the exact same application. So I'm going to open that up now. And it, once again, I'm going to not go into Adobe Acrobat. I'm going to open up Safari. And we're going to go into that develop menu again, open up the debugger for that. And now that this is uh, running, we're going to refresh it again. So it's looking pretty similar to the last one, uh, but there is a difference here in the way that our main bundle is loading. And so if we look at our main.js file here now, you can see that that is uh, 732 kilobytes now, which is a little bit smaller uh, than it was previously. I think it was around 830 or something like that. So we have that file being loaded in, uh, but we also have a separate file called 4.main.js being loaded in as well. Uh, so if I click on that, we'll actually be able to see, um, I'll be able to see the code for this uh, particular chunk that is being loaded in. And you can see here, this is the login page module. So it's loading in the login page separately to the main bundle. And that's because we're lazy loading that login page. Uh, the login page is needed now, and so it's getting loaded in. So again, let's get that timeline recording, and let's see what happens now when I click on create account. So if we take a look at this uh, network request here, I can just highlight that single one there so we can see what happened. Uh, you can see that 0.main.js is being loaded in, and it has a size of 30 kilobytes. And if we take a look at that one, we can see that that is the chunk for the register page. And so now that we're on the register page, that needed to be loaded in. Uh, it was loaded in, and then it was displayed. And let's also, uh, also take a look at uh, what happens when we log into the application. Uh, so again, we have our network requests that are firing off continuously because of PouchDB. Uh, but if we take a look at these ones in here, this time we can actually see that some additional JavaScript files are being loaded into the application. You can see we have a 1.main.js and a 5.main.js. So if we take a look at, at 1.main.js, we'll see that that is the notices page uh, module. That's the chunk we are loading in for the notices page. And if we take a look at 5.main.js, we'll see that that is the home page. Uh, so we are right now on the home page, which has tabs set up, and we're displaying the uh, notices tab on that page. So both of those are being loaded in. And once more, if we go back and just start uh, recording once more, uh, if we click on the uh, the chat tab, we'll see a similar sort of thing happen. Highlight that section there. We can see 2.main.js was loaded in. And if we click on that, I'm sure that it will be the chat page. Uh, so you can see as we go throughout this application, pages are being loaded in as they are required. They're not all being loaded uh, right at the beginning of the application. And so the effect of that on an application like this isn't going to be that large. It doesn't have all that many pages and components. Uh, in total, it has, uh, I think, around six pages, uh, two custom components, and a few providers and things like that. Uh, the structure of the application is pretty simple. Uh, and I think that's generally a good idea to keep the application as simple as possible and reuse pages and components where possible. But uh, sometimes people want to build out apl uh, applications that you know, maybe they do have 30 pages and 20 custom components and a whole uh, bunch of code that they need to load. Uh, so by using lazy loading in those circumstances, you're going to see a much bigger benefit uh, to doing that. So rather than having to load 50 components as soon as your application loads, you can just load the things that you need right away and then load the rest as you need them. So this doesn't, it doesn't change the overall size of your application. It's just changing the way that it's loading in to give a better experience.